What's up, Leo? Welcome to your June 2020 Creativity Tarot reading. My name is Kaylee Jean, and welcome to my channel. I record these readings for artists, entrepreneurs, and really anybody who is interested in working on their personal growth, self-expression, or spirituality in any form. So if those areas of life are important for you right now, I encourage you to go ahead and keep watching. I also want to say really quickly, because I get asked this a lot, you can use these readings for your sun, moon, or your rising sign, and it's also very possible if sometimes they don't resonate, particularly at the beginning of the month. So if you want to come back to this reading at the end of June and see how things connected, um, I encourage you to do so, but keep in mind these are just general readings. Whew. Okay, Leo, let's get into your messages. I had the most hilarious meditation for you guys. I was cracking up the entire time. So, wow. I feel like you guys are coming out in some kind of major way this month. And actually, the way that my guides kind of first helped me connect to that message was actually like as I kind of dropped into a deeper state of presence, the very first thing that came through was that I started hearing the song, Get This Party Started by Pink, which is such a ridiculous reference because it's so old and so like particular. I don't know. I just feel like it's so random, but I couldn't, once it came through, it just, I couldn't stop hearing it. And I was kind of seeing almost people kind of dancing and even I was kind of getting the impression of someone like break dancing and that was when I couldn't stop myself from just laughing out loud. It was just the most hilarious meditation I think I've ever had. I don't know why but I just feel this energy coming through for you guys where something about June I feel really marks this like sense for you of finally I'm here, finally I get to branch out, finally I am just finding my groove in some way and maybe that's why that song was coming through because one of the lyrics, the first lyric that I actually heard was the part where she says like I'm coming up so get the party started. I'm pretty sure that's the lyrics and so there's something here about like you approaching your life in a way where you're just, you're basically just looking at the things that you're gonna be doing this month or maybe people that you're gonna be engaging with or places you're gonna go. And you're just like, get ready for it because I am coming in hot. <laughs> so I don't know if you're doing something, maybe if you're an entrepreneur, you could be doing something online. You might be teaching a class or a workshop or you could be launching a new website or you could be um, doing a lecture or attending some kind of conference. I'm not really sure, but there's something here about really just feeling confident in yourself, really not not even giving any doubts at all the, the space in your mind. It's almost like you just have this very dominant vibration right now of this is a new beginning for me, this is a rebirth, and I'm showing up ready to do my best and completely just floor <laughs> the situation. So really interesting energy for you guys is very strong. I also feel that there's the potential, and you guys know if you've been on my channel for a while, my readings don't typically focus on love and romance, but I do feel that for some reason some of you could be feeling like that part of your life is getting reinvigorated somehow. If you're a Leo and you've been single for a while, or if you've just felt more solitary, which many of us have, given you know the recent obvious issues with coronavirus and stay-at-home orders, and so maybe this sense of like reemergence into a more of a romantic energy could be because you're able to go out more, depending on you know obviously your location and what the restrictions are and what the laws are. You might be just getting out there more, and so you could just be meeting more people or dating or starting to kind of feel a little bit more flirtatious in some way. So let's go ahead and get some more information from your tarot cards, and we will um, see what we get. Leo, Leo. Okay. 
Okay, and we're just going to get the video. Okay, I felt two from the Bob Ross deck, so we're going to go ahead and roll with that. So we've got deer as your path and dolphin as the energy that's influencing you. So, wow, such gorgeous energy right off the bat. Um, this really does kind of match what I was getting in the meditation, but I also feel like it even takes it further in terms of really reinforcing kind of the sweetness of this month for you guys. We do have the lunar eclipse, it's a penumbral lunar eclipse on June 5th, and that's going to be in Sagittarius, which is your fifth house of creativity. So um, there is a sense with the dolphin as kind of like the influencing energy because this is coming through as an influence and you're having this eclipse in the area of your fifth house of creativity. I want to say that there could be some kind of energy that you almost feel is sort of coming in uh, for you. It's almost like it's it's influencing you. This inspiration has chosen you in some way, Leo. And so you might feel kind of chosen in a sense. Um, and I don't mean that in kind of like a biblical or like mythical or, or self-important way at all. I think sometimes there's just this thing that happens when we are engaging with synchronicity in our lives and when we are working with our creativity and we're working on our art or our contributions or, you know, honing our skills, mastering something. There's a, a period of time often where, and it can undulate as well, where we start to feel a lot of synchronicities around whatever this is that we're trying to kind of hone in on. And the synchronicities are all kind of almost leading us forward or giving us this validation from the universe that this is something that is for you, right? That's kind of what I'm getting with this eclipse and then, you know, the fifth house energy and the dolphin card showing up in the influence section rather than the, like, your path card. Because this is saying that you, in a way, you are being chosen, whether you're going to look at that as your higher self is choosing, you know, something for you, or the universe is kind of interacting with you in a way to give you this validation that you are on the right path and that this thing that represents almost like your ideal situation or your ideal lifestyle or your um, ideal sort of path forward would be it's like life is giving you permission in a way but it's more than permission it's almost like the little things that are happening in your life are showing you that not only are you allowed to do this, but you're actually being sort of asked to. Um, whatever it is, whether it's a business idea or it's just a new path opening up in your career or in your creativity in some way. Um, it's not just you seeking it. That's the whole point here, Leo. Um, the path card is the deer. So your path forward is definitely one of, I want to say... Again, this word contribution is coming to mind with the deer. I, f I think of this card as a very nurturing creature, the deer. It also, sorry if you guys can hear my dog, she's sneezing. She wanted to be in here with me today doing readings. So um, you might hear her sneeze or snore <laughs> periodically. But um, with the deer is your path, it is one of kind of grounding yourself into like a commitment, I want to say, to making some sort of contribution. So this could relate to conservation efforts. If some of you are involved in, you know, environmental work in any way, then I would really, my ears perk up <laughs> for you um, seeing this card because I, I do think it has a lot to do with um, causes, you know, particularly causes that either have to do with the care of nature itself or the care of, you know, other human beings or the care of um, domesticated animals as well. There's just this energy with this card as your path that, yes, this is a path of joy for you, whatever you're inspired to do, um, but 
there's also this sense of like a, a loving commitment to something that's meaningful as well at the same time. And whether or not your work is directly related to that or your work is kind of circumstantially connected to it because you're going to be donating a portion of your profits to a cause or you're going to be, you know, putting some kind of effort into raising awareness for a certain cause. Even if, let's say, you're a fiction writer, you are still going to be doing things that in your work feel like you're trying to promote awareness to something that matters. And that's really the essence of the dear energy is it's this kind of, it's really just in a word, it's care. It's caring about something enough that you're willing to dedicate yourself to the um, patient like movement towards the betterment of that thing. And at the same time, you have the dolphin, so it's a path of joy. Now let's take a look at your tarot cards and we'll get some more information. So we've got Knight of Wands. <laughs> I can hear that song again, the, the pink song, I'm coming up. <laughs> That's totally like a perfect song for this card. It's so funny. Um, so we've got Knight of Wands and the King of Pentacles. We've got Two of Pentacles and the King of Cups. Knight of Cups, the Magician. Six of Cups and the Emperor. Beautiful. So I'm just going to tune in here. Okay, so I am getting some interesting information from this. You have a lot of strong male energies in this reading. You've got the King of Pentacles, King of Cups, um, and the Emperor, and you also have the Magician as well. So there could be, at face value, looking at these, there could be a helpful man in your life, Leo, um, coming up at some point in June, somebody who is maybe has some level of expertise or has possesses some kind of skill set or resources that could be useful to you. So there is the potential that you could come into some kind of flow of um, well-being or abundance or something beneficial because you have a lot of beneficial cards here. You really don't have any negative cards um, at face value. You know, no card is exactly only positive, only negative, but you get what I mean. You don't have any like of the major uh-oh cards here. So again, really matches up with the meditation message as well, which was very positive positive. Um, but I feel like this is potentially, you know, um, an influence from a man who uh, is either able to give you some help you forward with something in your career, maybe something in your professional life, or somebody who's able to provide some kind of leg up or some kind of support for you in some way. So I'm definitely really happy to see that. Um, but taking that and, you know, that's a valid message, putting it aside, going deeper into the energetics of the spread and reading the king presence here as part of you, which we're also meant to do. Um, the knight of wands and the king of pentacles are facing opposite directions in the beginning of, of the month of June. So there is some kind of a sense of a dis, uh, disparate energy between what you're passionate about doing and what seems like comfortable or what seems practical or what seems easy or what seems reliable. There's like a, a bifurcation there. There's like a fork in the road that you're dealing with in the first week of June where it's like, I want, I really want and I intuit that this path is the right one for me. But with the King of Pentacles looking the other way, it's like you're questioning, do I have the wherewithal? Do I have the financial capacity to take this risk? Do I have the proof of concept yet, you know, for me to actually start dedicating more of my time to this? Because that is a risk. Our time is our most valuable asset. 
Um, so one of the things I do see here though is I do feel that you're supported, Leo. That's just the feeling I get. The the meditation message, your animal spirit oracle cards, your tarot now, everything in here looks like you have a, a bit of a support network around you. And whether that means like financial, you know, for example, if you're somebody who is affected economically by the events of COVID, there could be a sense here where it's like maybe you're either they're on unemployment checks and so you're able to begin the process of either creating your own business or you are able to start you know going on serious interviews for something that would be better for you than what you were doing before um, so you could be getting income you know that will support you in that sense you could also be living with somebody who wasn't affected and so there's the sense of of you know that person being able to kind of support you on your journey because this is all tying together as something that's about you reaching. This is about you reaching for something better for yourself, Leo. And this is about you finding that and succeeding in that ultimately. Um, but we do see a journey here. So that is that energy. You know, when we have that penumbral lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, that's again, like I said, your fifth house of creativity. So that's what this is about. It's about balancing, you know, the creative passions that you have and then also, you know, finding ways to support yourself in the practical ways that you need and recognizing maybe that you do have that support network or you do have that kind of, um, what's the word, the, you have a net, I guess, a bit of a net. You obviously want to be aware of what your actual situation is. Um, and make moves that are well thought out. But I think ultimately, you know, you are supported, okay? The second week of June comes through with a little bit of back and forth when it comes to your emotional state. So I want you to be aware of that. Um, I want you to really go into the second week of June recognizing that you don't have to have everything figured out and that sometimes in any given moment in time, especially when you do have a lot of internal questioning or when you are walking a path of uncertainty or walking a path that takes you out into the unknown, that sometimes what you really have to do is to kind of lock yourself into a better feeling place in that given moment of time, right? So let me just like rephrase that so you can really hear it, it's like you might be telling yourself, if I don't know what I'm doing essentially, then like that equals bad. Or if I'm facing the unknown in some significant way and I'm feeling uncomfortable and I don't know how to like, I don't know how to solve this problem that I'm being faced with, that equals bad. And so you start feeling bad because of it. Sometimes in that moment, the answer isn't to just figure out what's going on and figure out the solution. Sometimes the answer is actually to just back away from that topic or that concept altogether and just be like, okay, I'm feeling anxious in this moment. I'm going to like consciously make an effort to center myself in this moment and recognize that that is my first objective. So it's not about solving the problem at hand. It's about solving you, Leo. It's about getting back into your solar plexus, getting back into your, you know, inner bright sun that you possess and recognizing that that is where your power is. Because I think it's possible with this kind of up and down card and with the King of Cups, with the emotions, you might be feeling kind of like, I don't, this is a toss up. I'm not really sure what, what to think about this. And then just that sense of uncertainty because you're a fixed sign and these are both like water and earth energies. You're not necessarily super comfortable with them anyway. This can feel like you're going to try and solve the problem and then wait until you solve the problem to feel good. That's actually like what I'm saying is like the reverse of what might be more helpful is just feel better, do something to feel better in the moment. And then the problem will likely get solved naturally or from that better feeling place you're gonna find a solution within a couple days or whatever. So you don't have to suffer in anxiety or concern at all. 
I don't see that being a huge issue, but I do just see it showing up in the cards a little bit right there. Um, the other potential interpretive difference there would be if you're working with a Scorpio person or if you have a Scorpio person so close to you in your life. I myself can relate. There's this really deep bond between Leos and Scorpios, and I've talked about this before on my channel, and you guys are always like agreeing with that sentiment because there is just something so powerful between us. Um, that, you know, it's like, there's just something that we're both reaching for individually that I think we see in the other, that Scorpios see in Leos and that Leos see in Scorpios. There's just some kind of really powerful karmic bond there that we learn and grow from each other. So if you are dealing with a Scorpio person close to you in your life, you might be feeling kind of, um, iffy about something that they want to do or something that they are suggesting that you do um, or you might just not really be sure how to approach them they could be coming off kind of like either moody in that second week of june or they could just be feeling like their emotions are going up and down and that's what this could be talking about it may not even be you it could be them um, and if that's the case, the answer is still kind of the same. It's, it's not about solving the problem with that person. It's about finding the good feeling place within you right now and then just, you know, letting the chips fall where they may, so to speak. Okay, um, the third week of June, we've got the King or the Knight of Cups and the Magician. So this is really obvious and clear. The third week of June is about pursuing your passions and being very creative. So think outside of the box, go with your instinct, go with your gut, and go with your desires um, in that third week of June, Leo. Um, there's going to be that solar eclipse on June 21st. So um, that is actually happening the day after the solstice, which for me, it's basically like saying it's happening on the solstice because in the US at least, it's happening so early in the day, early in the hours it's basically on the solstice. So I think that's a very powerful thing. It's rare to have an eclipse on the solstice. So um, there's, and that's in Cancer, which is gonna be your 12th house. So this can show something major kind of being um, activated. You know, eclipses can be activation points. And I do feel that with the magician here, what's being activated is your self-empowerment to pursue goals that are not only like desirous for you, but also deeply meaningful with the Knight of Cups, right? Like the, the Knight of Wands can be excited to do things just because they sound fun, right? And he can be a very passionate knight. But when you put the Knight of Cups with the Knight of Swords, you kind of get that sense of like, yeah, you're passionate about this, and yes, there's a lot of energy behind it, but it's also meaningful to you on a deep level. Like, your heart is involved in it because it does relate to something that you feel almost morally obligated to do, in a sense. So that may not be totally clear to you right now how that is, but I'm just telling you, you know, you'll probably get that clarity more and more. Um, the last week of June, we've got the Emperor and the Six of Cups. So the last week of June is possibly about setting up a, um, an environment that is going to be helpful and loving and um, supportive. Again, this is a Scorpio, Sun and Scorpio card. So there could be the energy of that Scorpio person or, you know, you, it could have nothing to do with that. But I just wanted to point that out. Um, and the emperor here makes me feel like this is you, Leo. So you are being tasked possibly at the end of the month with creating some kind of environment of security for a group or for maybe your children. If you have children, um, you might be working with children in some way, or you could be creating a community that feels safe, even if it's a community of adults. Like, let's say you're, you're starting a Facebook group, you know, for something, a topic that you're interested in or a topic that you know a lot about. That could be a perfect like description of this. Um, it could just be also like creating, like you are tasked with the idea of creating order or community around yourself at the end of the month. But I think that that's going to be really nice for you. I think you're going to enjoy that process of creating that. And then you're also a Leo, so you like to be the boss, you know, let's, let's call a spade a spade. And normally a lot of other people around you 
also like for you to be in that role. <laughs> and I do think that's genuinely true because if you have, you know, I mean, I've had friend groups where there's the Mercury and Leo person or the Sun and Leo person. And um, you do always really care like what they have to say or you're always kind of like, oh yeah, you know, let's let's go there when they're like suggesting something. But again, maybe that's just me because I'm a little bit more of like a yin person. So when I have a Leo friend or like a strong Leo person around me, I actually like tend to enjoy their input a lot. So um, that could be the situation where you just feel like your natural tendency to kind of be a leader is actually appreciated in some situation at the end of the month. Okay, so um, your two Bob Ross cards are talent is pursued interest. Anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. Okay, that's the first one. And it also, the other one is, this is not something you should labor over or worry about, Leo. Enjoy it. If painting does nothing else, it should make you happy. I love this for your creativity this month. It's about practice, right, with the first card. And it's about also recognizing that it's supposed to feel joyful. Like this is, this is the whole thing. This is the whole crux of it, is enjoying the process of mastery. Enjoying the process of taking yourself through the steps to get better and better and better at whatever you do. Better and better and better at whatever it is that you do, Leo. Enjoying that process. This is kind of like a side note, but I honestly feel like when you think about, like, I don't know, this is gonna be so random, but I was, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, thinking about history and countries that have experienced authoritarianism and experienced fascism in a way, I think that there's something that the individual can do that helps prevent a negative movement in the state, um, which has to do with the individual like mastering themselves, mastering their passions and not only their passions creatively because I think mastering a skill like cooking for example you can't master something without completely engaging in nuance right like you can't master cooking unless you understand so many fine distinctions among every little detail that goes into cooking an amazing dish from the quality of the ingredients to you know the way that they're chopped to the temperature they're cooked on to the seasoning the amount of seasoning that's applied and you know the plating and everything there's just thousands of details when you really think about it um and so you know i feel like when you're in a situation where we're teetering on this potential for authoritarian concepts and ideas being dominating, you know, in society, the best way that maybe we as individuals can sort of counteract that or stop that from happening is really to master ourselves. Um, and that can start with a creative thing, but I think it also goes into every other area of your life. You know, when you really understand nuance and you leave space for the complexity of life, you can't really be fed propaganda. You can't necessarily become somebody who just repeats slogans and falls for lies, right, by politicians or whatever, because you understand that life is infinitely more complex than you could ever, you know, even imagine. And so you're not going to be fooled by easy solutions. You're not going to be fooled by, um, people who try and make it seem like a problem is like simple. Um, they are in a sense, but in another sense, they are very incredibly complex. And so um, I think a lot of times, you know, with authoritarianism and that like slide towards that, a lot of that is really like um, removing that appreciation for complexity. And I think there's even a quote from someone, I don't remember the name of them that said that, um, that tyranny is the uh, intentional 
uh, the in intentional reduction of nuance, basically, from life. So it's basically saying, like, these things are black and white, and if you don't accept that, and you don't think like that, then you're, you know, not a good member of society, because you have to think this way, you know, just like everybody else. Um, that's taking away nuance, you know? So I think mastery, if you master something like writing or cooking or, um, you know, whatever, reading tarot cards, you can't fall for political slogans. You can't fall for things that are not, um, that are not really representative of like the fullness of life, the full complexity of life. A lot of times the only reason that people will tell you something or try and get you to believe something that's too oversimplified is because they have a reason to want you to think that way, right? Okay, so that was just a huge rant. I'm sorry so much for you guys getting that huge rant in this reading. Wow. So the surrender card that you guys got is Surrender to Divine Timing. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Sometimes divine timing may differ from your ego's timing. If a goal isn't manifesting fast enough, according to your ego, be patient and trust the universal flow. This is interesting. I think this is basically saying that this, these eclipse energies that we're going into are going to be taking effect much longer after this month. Like I would say maybe for the next three months, you're going to be seeing developments that have to do with what's going on in June. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, Leo. I hope you got something useful from this reading. I hope that you got something beneficial out of it. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts. Um, if you enjoyed this reading, please also consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Those things are really helpful and supportive to the work that I put into these readings. Also, leaving me a little comment with a fire emoji um, would make my heart just feel so full of gratitude. And it really, again, helps support my channel because any engagement on these videos really just supports my channel's growth. Um, so thank you so much for doing those things if you are and i hope that you have an amazing month in june leo take care i think you're gonna have an amazing time so you guys have had the best reading of anybody so far and i'm happy for you for that and I'm sending you tons of love and i will talk to you next month bye